Welcome to Italy. My name is Joe Bastiani. I'd like to welcome the region of Umbria and all you lovely people for coming out to celebrate Umbria on this cold, rainy, snowy day. It's with, uh, with uh, great pride and honor that Italy welcomes Umbria and the city of New York. Even though the city of New York has lots of things going on, I'm not one of the smaller, more, more less, less vital things, but also very, very important is the fact that it's the uh, November is I Love Umbria month in the city of New York. And David Ernst has come here to read the proclamation to us. As we celebrate the glories of Umbria culture, we also celebrate all the Italian Americans who have worked hard to make this the greatest city in the world. Now, therefore, I, Michael R. Bloomberg, mayor of the city of New York, do hereby proclaim November uh, 2012 in the city of New York as I Love Umbria Month. Signed. 17, though, um, the first time I tasted it was probably in 1997 um, when this gentleman, Marco Capri, from uh, the Capri Winery, gave brought a bottle of the 1993 Sargentino de Montefalco to taste. We had just opened up a small wine shop called Italian Wine Merchants, and I remember tasting this wine and putting it on my palate, and the, the grip and the web-like tannins that this wine had was really like no other sensation I had ever had, and I remember that moment to this day because having tasted a lot of uh, Italian wines, that moment was truly impactful and uh, I'll never forget it. And then uh, Sargentino has become a huge part of what's important in Italian red wines. And uh, without any further ado, I will let someone talk more about Umbria and Sargentino who knows much more about it than me, Mr. Uh, Marco Capai. Mr. Umbria is uh, the green heart of Italy. We are the center of Europe, uh, Italy. And uh, we are a historical uh, region. We are a beautiful uh, small city, medieval city, Roman city. We have uh, a beautiful uh, landscape and also we have uh, a, uh, a fantastic uh, food and wine. Sagrantino is like great. It's in high tannins, which is what Joe mentioned, gripping tannin. Tannin is what you feel on the side of your cheeks, between your cheek and your gum. So it makes a wine uh, ageable, long-lived, uh, really powerful in its youth, and it gives a wine structure and kind of grace as they age. High acidity, and that kind of tingling sensation in the back of your cheeks. It's high acidity and high tannin, which kind of make you know, give wines this ability to age. Um, less than 1% of all the wine made anywhere in the world every year is meant to age more than five years. So the whole concept of aging wine actually applies to a very small percentage of the wine that we drink. The first course, uh, porcinis, uh, the first porcinis of the season coming, these are actually coming from the Pacific Northwest. Um, just like the uh, saute with a little garlic, some thyme, olive oil, and then we have uh, some uh, saute fennel, uh, still has a little crunch to it, a little watercress, um, and a vinaigrette of uh, truffle carpaccio. Basically, uh, truffles from uh, one of our uh, major suppliers are Urbani, with uh, some apple cider vinegar, a little bit of homebrewed olive oil, and um, a little shallot. The coqueta uh, is uh, generally is very traditional in the group of coqueta with the red wine, also because uh, the red wine in Colombia was full of body uh, with a good structure and uh, it's a very good uh, taste, very intense uh, and spice. So what you guys have is a version of croquetta that we do here. This is uh, from our own history. Uh, depending on what cut of the uh, croquetta you guys got from, we'll have uh, <coughs> part of the shoulders, so there's going to be dark meat uh, on yours. Some will have just the uh, center cut of the loin. So the other wine that we mentioned that uh, Mark also makes and a lot of other producers make is called uh, just one cup of Rosso. And the beauty of these wines is that, again, they're a little confusing because it's not like, well, it weren't in there, isn't it supposed to be Sacramentino wines? But this is actually always based on Sangiovese, and they always have to have a little bit of Sacramentino. But they're beautiful wines because if you taste the Monte Falco Rosso, it has like the fruit and the elegance and the delicacy of, of uh, Sangiovese, but there's like a little kick. Not only our product, because we are an olive oil company from Umbria, and more importantly, we want to be a representative for a great region that is so uh, important in so many different products, but in particular for olive oil. 
what makes Umbrian oils special is uh, their unique varietals. Uh, there are about 200 varietals of olives that are used for oil oil production. Uh, Umbria usually hosts five to seven varietals, of which the most important ones are Moraiolo, Lecino, and Frantoio. What makes the oil made with those varietals special is a very unique taste profile. Umbrian oils are usually very mild to the palate. They have a nice finish, but not an overwhelming finish. Uh, they have a buttery, uh, almondy, very nutty uh, hint that, that marries perfectly. Most times, anytime you see like an Appalachian and then a, another grape variety, for the most part, it's either all that grape or like 85% to 100%. So it always has to be a dominant grape. And this particular wine is 85% Sangiovese and 50% Merlot. But it's nice, it's light, it's like a nice quaffer. Um, a little peppery on the nose, I think, like really, really bright and again, really clean and really good kind of cherry red uh, Basically, it's the uh, olive oil cake. Uh, the, the fat that's used in the cake instead of uh, butter has been substituted with uh, Umbrian olive oil. Um, underneath it is a little puree of uh, persimmon, and then on top of it is a uh, gelato of uh, pure de latte. Thank you for coming. And, uh, thank you for your. Thank you.